Yeah. Okay. Well, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our next guest, Port Melbourne Primary School Sports Podcast. Cass Lachlan, a renowned Fox, Fox Sports presenter, Fox footy and cricket. She moved from Sydney to join Fox, which is 20, and has gone on to a very successful career covering mainly cricket and AFL. Cass hosts AFL Game Day, along with shows The Saturday Stretch. She was also recently the first ever female to host the Fox footy flagship show AFL 360. You're also the first female on the Port Melbourne Primary School Sport Podcast cast. So I'm not sure how the nerves are for, for both events, but welcome and thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon. Thank you, Claudia and Harry. Well, that's the latest, that latest achievement you just wrote out is my greatest <laughs> achievement. So thrilled to be on this podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Over to you, Claudia and Harry. Thanks, Gaff. Um, what's the biggest part of your job? The biggest part of my job, I think the biggest part is research because whenever I go to a game or I go to the Fox Footy studio in Melbourne, you've got to be ready to go and it's it's get into makeup and then get on set and do your job. So I think the biggest part is research uh, in the lead up and I often do that at home. That's researching players who might be featuring in the game you're covering or researching about certain news stories. For example, today it's all about Toby Green and should he be suspended or not? How many weeks should he be suspended for? So you've got to do your research in terms of looking at past incidents and seeing who else may have touched an umpire and what sort of suspension did they get? So a lot of it is being prepared and knowing your stuff so that you're not nervous on air. You always get a few butterflies. But uh, the more researched you are on air, the more relaxed you are and the better job you'll do. So I'd say the biggest part of my job is research. Yeah. You have the most terrifying job. I think I'm going to cut you off there, Harry, Claudia, to speak on TV live, free, like live as it's going is, yeah, I, I could not do it. It's, uh, how do you cope with that? Yeah. Is, it, is that something you grew up wanting to do or how did you develop that, that skill? Yeah. Yeah, it is nerve-wracking. I always enjoyed drama at school. I always enjoyed my two favourite subjects were drama and PE. So I feel like my job now almost combines the two um, in that I'm performing a little bit, but then I'm also just talking sport. But, yeah, you do get really nervous and that's something you um, just get used to and it takes time building up experience to become less nervous. But, yeah, I was when I started out, I would be shaking um, which when you're holding the mic, that's a little bit embarrassing because your hand's shaking and people can see that you're so nervous and then you get more nervous. Um, and also I think when you start out and you stuff up, you think it's the end of the world and um, it's really not. It's making mistakes is good because you learn from them and that makes you a better journalist in the long run. So, yeah, I remember one time on air I was meant to say fighting and I said farting. And so that was really embarrassing and that got a lot of traction and I've never lived that down. So you've got to make mistakes and no matter your career, you're going to make mistakes in the early days and don't think it's the end of the world. It's going to make you a better person or whatever your chosen job is. So, yeah. What challenges do you face while presenting on national TV? Oh, I think she just probably touched on that, yeah. That's a good question. Uh, there are a lot of challenges, Harry. Um, probably the biggest challenge in television is when something goes wrong. So, for example, um, you might be interviewing, I might be interviewing you, Harry, on a show, and then all of a sudden, Harry, you don't turn up or your, um, your internet cuts out and we lose you. But I'm on air and I've just told the audience that Harry's coming up and I'm interviewing Harry and Harry's about to join us shortly and then all of a sudden you're gone. And you've got to find a way to not freak out and just to reassure everyone that everything's fine. We're getting to Harry shortly, but we're going to talk about um, Claudia now. And you go on to talk about Claudia. And so that's probably one of the challenges is making everything seem seamless and smooth when sometimes um, it's not so seamless and smooth off air. And, and you've got a lot of people yelling in your ear saying, Harry's gone. You need to go to Claudia. And, you know, there's all these noises in your ear when you're trying to act calm and casual on air. So that's probably one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. 
What made you want to do journalism? Uh, I always loved English at school. I loved writing. So English, and as, as I touched on drama and PE, were my, my favourite subjects. And so I think the idea of being on uh, presenting on television, but also writing and doing articles and features and interviews on people, that, that all really appealed to me. So I think it was a combination of English drama, PE, and I kind of led to journalism and then eventually to sports journalism. Yeah, why did you choose sports journalism over like other sort of types? Well, I did actually start in a, at a radio station doing general news and I found it really negative, Harry, because you're talking a lot about deaths, car crashes, um, diseases. For example, now you'd be talking about COVID every day of the week, whereas I always loved sport. My two favourite sports were like you, AFL and cricket. And I thought how cool that would be, really positive and exciting to always talk about sport. So I think that's what uh, led me to sports journalism over general news. Do you support a team in the AFL? Sure do. Fremantle. Haven't had a lot of success though, Claudia. So, um, but I'm a loyal person, so I've stuck with them. <laughs> and yeah, Dockers are still my team. But it's funny when you start, when you work in journalism, in sports journalism, uh, you stop going for a team so much and you start going for more individuals. You might interview a player or a coach and then, you, you know, you get a bit invested in their, in their story and their career. So you all of a sudden want to see their team win. But in terms of who I grew up supporting, loved Freo. Yeah. What were your favourite subjects at school? Yeah, so definitely English drama PEs I touched on. Um, what else did I? No, you know what? I, I wasn't a very good student, Harry. I just always loved being outdoors and playing sports. So PE was definitely my favourite subject, anything sport related. Um, hated maths, hated science. So, yeah, I, I've got nothing other than PE, uh, English and drama. They are my sports. That's not, that's yeah. not the mail I've got, Gareth. I heard you're an exemplary student. So the person who's given me my notes, my pre-show notes, uh, I'll have to have a word to because they're not they're not correct from what I'm hearing from you. <laughs> she I, must we, be a friend. <laughs> <laughs> she must be a close friend, yeah. Um, <laughs> were you a sport captain as well? I was sport captain. Yep. Yeah. I was sport captain in year 12. Um, and I loved it. I loved it because uh, I found that everyone was happy when they were playing sport. Um, so it was a pretty easy gig just to encourage everyone to get involved in sport at school, be active, be healthy and happy. So, yeah, I loved being sports captain at school. What advice would you give to these sports captains? We had Tom on before and he talked about being authentic as a leader and I work with the year six leaders at school and especially these two. What advice would you have for them with their leadership? Yeah, I think it definitely it's good to pick other people's brains and to... Um, try to learn what makes a good leader. But at the same time, what's going to make you a good leader is being yourself. So if you're more someone who likes to lead by actions rather than words, then do that. Um, if you're one who thinks people need a bit of tough, tough love to be the best version of themselves, then be that kind of leader. Or if you're a more softly spoken person, stay true to that. So I definitely think be yourself, um, but also always try to be a better version of yourself. So I think you can always seek out advice, always have a mentor. I think um, having a good role model in your life is going to help, whether it's a family member or a close friend or someone at school, a teacher, that's always going to help you in the long run. Yeah. Thanks, Kat. Is that it? No, no, no. Um, no, no, there's more. There's more. Um, let me just find it. Okay. Okay. Um, what was your first big break in journalism? Oh, first big break. Um, I think, Harry, when I got told I was reading Fox Sports News when I was about 21, I think I was, and I remember it clearly. It was a Saturday afternoon, 4 p.m. bulletin I had to read, and I was so nervous, but luckily it went okay. And I think it's um, when you're most nervous in life situations that's when you uh that's when you would achieve some great things and and you have to be a bit nervous and make yourself a little bit uncomfortable at times I think to become a better person and to get ahead in life and so I was very nervous that day I remember I was shaking under the desk and my mouth went all dry and I was just 
almost wishing I wasn't there. Um, but then when I got through it and realised I'd done it, it was one of the best feelings. And I think that um, instilled in me a lot of confidence that I could do it and that perhaps I did have a long future ahead of me in, in TV. That, yeah. sounds what, that sounds what I'm like, Cass, but that's when I'm doing sporting events or assembly, not, not, not on national audience. So it's good to know that you go through that as well. It just minds on a much smaller scale. We all get nervous. We all get nervous. Who are your favourite professional athletes to watch? Oh, I've got so many. I can't narrow it down. Um, I mean, right now, I love, we all love Dustin Martin, don't we? He's one of the best players to watch. I don't think you have to be a Richmond fan to enjoy watching Dusty. Um, cricket, I love Pat Cummins. I also, um, oh, who else? I mean, the Olympics, I was really excited to watch Simone Biles, the US gymnast, but unfortunately yeah. she didn't um, mm -hmm. perform as much as we would have liked. And then I think you always love those once in a lifetime athletes like Roger Federer, Rafa Nadal, Serena Williams, Tiger Woods, mm -hmm. um, those athletes that, you know, are really lucky to be able to witness. Sorry, I gave you a few there. I didn't really say no, my no, one favourite, but I couldn't no, choose. Good. Sorry. <laughs> What's the biggest achievement that you've achieved? Oh, oh it's hard to answer this question whilst trying to sound humble. No, you can, you can humble brag here. It's okay. So <laughs> what we, honesty, not modesty. Yeah. Um, in terms of my career, definitely I think hosting AFL 360 because I'd been a fan of the show for so long. I'd grown up watching it. I've been in awe of Jared Waitley and Mark Robinson and, and I used to watch 360 with my brother back when I was your age, um, you know, going to primary school and high school and watching 360 every night to get my footy, my footy news. So I think to actually um, present the show for the first time was was probably my greatest achievement to date in my in my media career, no doubt. Outside of uh, football, who's your favourite team? Outside of football, well, we, you've got to go the Aussie cricket team. I mean, everyone's got to get behind our Aussie cricket team. There's only one. Um, I also, yeah, and that's men and women. I yeah. also love the Matildas uh, female soccer team because I think. They're so entertaining to watch. They're so popular and everyone gets right behind the Matildas as we saw at the Tokyo Olympics and especially that game where they beat Great Britain. I think it was 4-3. It was an epic game. Sam Kerr, the hero again. So I think perhaps the Matildas I'm going to go, Harry. Interesting you yeah. say that, Cass. Um, my co-worker, Miss Janelle, she is interviewing someone from the Matildas. So stay tuned oh. and see who that is on Wednesday. I'm not sure who it is. She hasn't told me. So, um, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, can't big, wait. Some, some big names, there's big names on the podcast. Yeah, I know. This is the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> My first four into it. Started all right. I've had some big names. <laughs> That's great. Well, I'm glad I chose the Matildas. Who do you look up to? Oh, I've got so many people I look up to. And I think that's um, the beauty of working in this industry, the media industry. There are so many different personalities and, and different commentators and hosts. I love Mark Howard, who commentates on the cricket. He also does a fair bit of footy now on Fox Footy. Um, he's been a bit of a mentor and, and a good friend to me. Um, I love Bruce McAvaney, who I think everyone loves, and Hamish McLaughlin. I think those two are very knowledgeable hosts and very smooth mm -hmm. on air. Um, and, oh, I mean, I love, I love the girls I work with too, Kelly Underwood and Sarah Jones. They're both very classy, very professional and really paved the way for younger um, female journalists like myself to come through and, and um, seamlessly slot into the industry. So, oh, there's, there's plenty, but those, those few that I mentioned are probably top of the list. Just a few. And lastly, did you ever play footy as a kid and what sports were you into? I didn't actually play footy properly. I mean, you always played it in at recess time or at lunch time. Yeah. Um, the boys and girls always play footy at our school, primary school. But it wasn't such a big thing, um, female footy back then, which is why I love seeing the growth of the AFLW now. Um, but my sports were I loved netball. I was a gun GA and centre. 
And I loved, I took swimming pretty seriously as well. I was a competitive swimmer for a while there too. So, um, but I loved water polo. I, lo- I got, got into a lot of sports during uh, school days, which is the beauty of school. You can do all sorts of sports and I think everyone should give it all a go. I did tennis as well. Um, so yeah, a bit of everything, but swimming and netball were probably my two favourite sports as a kid. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Just on on that, as a swimmer, now you were a very good athlete. Now I have a mate who refers to himself as Hollywood, and he has Hollywood. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the type of operator he is. Now he's completed <laughs> the Rottnest Island swim, I think, in a relay in a group of four. Yes. Um, and it's quite a lengthy swim. Can you share your experience? Because when I found out you'd done that swim, it was like one of the first things I wanted to to hear you talk about. Because that is have a listen to this kids a phenomenal achievement and yeah please share yeah. that it is a long swim it's it's 19.7 kilometers from rock uh from Cottesloe beach to rockness island and i did it solo um and Sorry. so it took me did you hear that kids solo solo <laughs> did it by herself not running swam nearly 20 days that is it, it's on a boat for that you were on a boat for that <laughs> yeah it was it's a it's a fun day in wa it's one of the biggest events on the WA calendar it's so much fun and I think so it took me five hours and 45 minutes I think to do it and on my my day I copped a pretty choppy day so it wasn't too pleasant but um, at least when it's choppy it means there aren't too many stingers so you have one or the other so luckily I didn't get stung so much but it was it did make the swim a lot harder Um, but yeah it's it was a uh, bucket list item I always wanted to do it because growing up in Perth the Rotto swim is, is one of the most talked about events and so I did it I was so glad I did it and when I got to Rotness I thought thank goodness I'm all in one piece and I'm never swimming through those shark infested waters again because there are so many sharks around off the coast of WA mm-hmm. um, I kind of want to shape you know slap myself for doing it but um it was a very very fulfilling achievement and, and yeah I'm glad I glad I did it did yeah. you did you have hopes of being a professional athlete or a swimmer you did touch on you being doing professional like squad swimming did you want to be an athlete or did you always like I know you said you did journalism yeah. as well did you want to be an athlete yeah, I remember I always used to watch the Olympic trials and think how cool would it be to go to an Olympic Games and, and maybe I could go there for swimming. But then when I was about 18, I, I probably realised I wasn't that good enough and um, the next best option was to be a journalist at all the big sporting events. So I pursued my career and I'm really glad I made that decision because I've had an awesome, awesome time as a sports journalist so far and, and hope for for it to continue. Awesome. Thank you so much, Cass. Thank you for taking the time you, this afternoon. No worries, guys. It's been an absolute privilege to be on this uh, very talked about podcast. <laughs> thanks well, for actually, having me. Actually, one more question before you go. Sorry, because it is National Health and PA Day on Wednesday and we're in lockdown at the moment. Um, yep. How do you, what's your sort of routine in the morning or your physical activity routine that you might have to keep you in a good place good headspace at the moment because it is quite challenging um what what what, talk us through your day well I always like to get up usually I always like to get up and and exercise first thing in the morning and I love running I also love swimming as I've touched on but because of the lockdowns in Melbourne and stuff and you can't go to pools and I'm not um I'm not as tough as your teacher here and I don't like swimming in the bay because I think it's too cold. So I tend to go for a run as soon as I get up. I love running for 10K or so and um, just listening to some music and I feel like that's a perfect start to the day. And then I also like to do a bit of an at-home workout with some weights and some resistant bands. I think staying, staying fit and also exercising for me just keeps me in a really good mental mindset and keeps me positive which is so crucial during lockdown. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Kath. I really appreciate spending time on here this afternoon. And thank you so much, Harry and Claudia, spending time outside of school hours to, to be here in yeah. this podcast. So thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Great thank questions, you. you guys. And if I can ever help you in the future, you just sing out. Actually, you. You, uh, while, I, while you are here, lastly, you were meant to present the cup for the Tommy Lay Women's oh, Competition. Yes. So that's what I had 
plans. So the girls who, who did want to play in the Comedy Layout Cup, Kath was going to be our special guest to present it. So hopefully yeah. next year, girls in year five, if you're listening, Kath might be there to present that. Can I put you down for that? Yes, lock it in for 2022. Thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Thank you.